All right, well, hello everybody. Thank you for taking the time and coming to listen to me talking about hiring a junior developer and not the great sandwich debate of 2016, which is right next door. So if you're in the wrong place, you can leave now and go check it out. But if not, we can settle that later. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah, go ahead. OK, so we're going to struggle a little bit here, because as I have my notes on here and hooked up to my computer, it seems like it doesn't always want to stay connected. So let's hope for a good presentation. So I'm David Hopp. I am currently the Chief Operating Officer at Agape Red. I've been doing development for currently nine years. I've been at Agape Red for almost five. And I know a few things about junior developers, so I'm going to talk a little bit about them as some of them are sitting here right in front of me, smiling, and I will love it. So let's start with a little story. Go back a few years when I was just a college student. I got lucky. I found a great place. When I was in college, I was a junior, I decided, OK, I need to find a job. I need to find an internship and actually start getting some real education because, well, college you learn certain things, but on the job you learn a lot more. So I was lucky enough that I went into a job that I knew everything about. I was the best intern. I knew every single thing. If anyone's looking at me with strange faces, understandable because, well, I may have thought I knew everything. I clearly did not. And I was very fortunate enough because I had a very considerate manager that liked to smack me down, not physically, but metaphorically, and would tell me, you're wrong, in literal terms. You're wrong was said to me quite a few times. But through that, I learned that there were good things to do and there were bad things to do. And like I said, I was lucky enough that I had a manager that was willing to mentor me and provide a little bit of guidance, so to say, to a up-and-coming 20-year-old that knows everything in the world because that's just the way we are when we're 20, and that's all right. So let's talk a little bit about junior developers. So think about this guy. Let me introduce you to Albus Dumbledoodle. That is his real name. This is my puppy. And this was him, just like a junior developer, coming home all eager and happy and couldn't think there was anything wrong with the world. He's still pretty much like that. Me, his manager, I see things a little bit differently. And that's OK, though. So why would you hire a junior developer? This isn't my dog. It's just a picture. It's a very regal looking picture. You could think of it like a senior developer, someone who's out there, already has been to the world, looks phenomenal, just perfectly trained, knows exactly what to do. But why would you look at a junior developer when you could have this? Well, there's a few great things about junior developers. What are some benefits of a junior developer? First off, let's state the obvious one, salary. Junior developers are going to cost less. They're going to be easier on the pocketbook, but yet you're still going to get a lot out of them in the long run. Something else, open-mindedness. First time he ever saw a sprinkler. He didn't know what a sprinkler was until he saw that. It's something fun, something you got to enjoy doing. Junior developers, when they come into your company, are going to not have a bias. They're going to not have preformed opinions, or if they are, like a something 20-year-old that's like, I know the right way to do this, you can easily beat it out of them. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. You can help form them into the long-term developer that you really want them to be as a part of your company. You can help form them into your company culture, let alone the stack that you're going to be developing in or whatever it might be that you want to have them learn and understand in the long term. This is the right way to do it, and you shouldn't do it the other way. That's all great benefits. So what are some things you have to do for your junior developers? Obviously, you got to feed them. He's sitting here. He's apparently too lazy to actually eat standing up. So he lays down. You got to feed him. You got to pay him. I mean, 
Unpaid internships, that's not a real thing anymore, at least in the tech world. I don't think it ever has been as far as I know. But you have responsibilities besides just paying your developers and clothing them with that salary. You have to mentor them. As I said, when I was an intern coming out of college, I got mentored. That is why I'm here the way that I am now and able to do what I am now, is mentoring. That is an incredible responsibility that the managers must take on and must understand in order to get those junior developers to become full functioning members of your company and the tech world as a whole if they ever were to leave. So you also want to give, you have to give them opportunities to thrive. You can't just throw them into a hole and say, go code me an app. You have to give them that ability and trust that they can have that ability. Training, as I was saying, you have to train them. This little guy's gone through training. Petco class graduate, yes he is. Does he do everything that he's supposed to even though he's learned it? No, and neither are junior developers, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't help those junior developers continually learn the, tr the things over and over and over again, you're gonna have the same, you're gonna have problems in the long term. What do we do with him every single time we take him for a walk? We tr practice with him. What do you do with your junior developers every single time you review their code? Because you should be reviewing their code. That is something that's very important because if you just let him out and run, he's gonna run away and you're gonna find out just all sorts of bad things. There we go. You gotta th make things fun. Like I said, you can't just have developers writing tests. When you have a junior developer come in, writing tests is a great thing to do. It's a way to learn the code base, it's a way to learn the existing process of how things are done at the company and understand that process. But they don't wanna just sit and write tests all day long. You wanna write new functionality, you wanna write the new hotness. You wanna be exposed to new different technologies and be able to go through different things and learn those items. So where writing tests is great, you gotta give them that chance to have the interesting and fun work to do with new technology, such as learning a new stack. If you have a new app that needs to be built, try something new, let them try it. You're paying them not that much, so it's all right. If you end up throwing their code away, it happens. It's there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to just use React.js or whatever it might be just because something new to learn, let them try it. Give them a chance. Continue to keep things interesting. You've got to give them challenges. Give those developers that challenge so that they continue to thrive and you push them because you can't, again, just expect them. If you say do this same thing over and over again, they're gonna be able to do that one thing great, but they need to be able to learn how to continue to learn. That's the thing that any job is when you have someone coming into it, you gotta know how to learn. Especially in the technology field, if you don't learn how to learn on the job, you're not gonna to continue to be able to be in that job. And it's not just learning technology. You gotta learn how to keep things entertaining besides just the tech and practical skills. So besides coding, what do you do when you're on the job? You talk to people. How do you communicate with people? You need to mentor your junior developers on communication because again, 20 year old me, when I came into the workforce, I would just say that's the way it is because it is that way. <laughs> It's a bunch of nonsense. If you don't learn how to express yourself and teach them how to express themselves so that they're able to say, well, we made this decision for the code base because if you do it this way, it's going to take 10 times longer than this way. Yes, it took a little bit longer to write, but it's gonna be more efficient in the long run for your end users. So being able to make that kind of com connection of communication skills, it's very important. Managing. You don't always want to be managing the junior devs. You need to teach your junior devs how to become that management because they're the next generation of you. And so if you never teach them and you want to retire, 
well, there's no one to pick up the slack and you're just kind of out of luck, sorry. You don't ever get to retire. As well, conflict resolution. It's something that's some simple, but teaching the junior de developers how to deal with conflict. It's pretty basic, you're gonna have it. You're gonna have code disagreements of should we write a for loop or should we write a while loop? Whichever one it might be, figure it out, do it amicably, and can continue forward. Junior developer is always great when they have friends. That's our cat. He's a seven-year-old cat. The puppy's currently 18 weeks. They kind of get along. <laughs> they do all right. It's always good to have multiple junior developers together. So recently we hired a couple of code school students, and at least one of them is here. And we hired two at the same time. Why did we hire two at the same time? They can share experiences. They can go through it together. They can experience it together. And they'll be like, hey, do you understand what's going on? Because I don't. And have someone to bounce ideas off of and realize, OK, I'm not alone. I'm in this together with somebody else. It's really meaningful and really beneficial to have that extra person to go through experiences with. So a really basic kind of a thing. Albie got his first haircut, grooming. Not the actual sense of, hey, you need to learn how to cut your hair better kind of a sense, but there are other soft skills that you have to teach your junior developers as well and think about going forward. We work in consulting. We work with clients. Our junior developers need to learn how to interact with those clients. We need to help make them understand, okay, you should not wear shorts and flip-flops when you're meeting with a client that is a Fortune 500 company. That's just not the way to do it. So helping them understand whatever your business cult your culture is in your company, if it's business casual, if it's shorts every day, any day, if it's jeans on Friday, helping them understand that so they're not left out hanging and out to dry, looking awkward and feeling awkward in, that, in the end. Now, not everything is gonna be roses and sunshine. This is a great picture. It took, I don't know how long to get this picture. I went through probably about 15 to 20 getting this one picture of him where he's actually kind of looking at the camera, not really, he's actually looking over to the side and that's all right with it. But in the end, it happens. So let's talk about a few little kind of concerns about junior developers. So this is the dog and the cat, if it wants to start, maybe. Let's try that, there we go. They started playing together in the last week and a half. We've had them home for a while. Dominance problems. I was that junior developer. I came in there saying, this is the way we need to do it, and I am right. Now, were there times that I was right? Yeah, well, that didn't work out quite as well. But anyways, were there times that I was right? Yes, there were times that I was right. But there was a lot of times as a junior developer, I came in there head of steam, I was the right one. I battle with this little guy all the time about who's in charge. I'm not always the winner, and that's going to be okay. And the same with the junior developers. Just because I'm the more senior person making the recommendations doesn't mean I'm always gonna be right. Junior developers are great at coming up with new ideas and great topics, but a lot of times they're also going to come up with really bad ideas and really bad things to do. Hey, let's watch it play one more time, why not? Might as well. They're starting to love each other and that's all right, that's cool. Additionally, one day, you're gonna come into your code base and depending on how your environment is structured, you're just gonna see crap all over. This thing is not working out, that's all right. You're just gonna see crap all over. Yeah, you think you're going all right, you go for a month or two and potty training is going great with the puppy, then all of a sudden you come home from work and it's just everywhere. 
the same thing's going to happen with your developers. You're going to work with them and say, hey, this is how we're doing things in the code base. This is how you go through. And this is how you do your loops. This is how you do your logic of object orientation. And then all of a sudden, it's like, where, did you forget what I just told you for the last two months? That's going to happen. That's all right. That's cool. This is come where developer expectations. <laughs> are, you, are you crying, Alec? <laughs> developer expectations from your de junior developers. So we were out on a walk. This is probably maybe the first week that we had them, I think. We were going out for a walk. We didn't think it was a very long walk. It was only about maybe two or three blocks. And he just plops and will not move. We expected too much out of him, and I had to end up carrying him. Junior developers are the same way. You can't expect too much. If you just say, you need to build me a new Swift app, even though you've never done Swift before, and I need it by Friday, that's too much. You're going, the developer's just going to sit there and not know what to do, deer in the headlights, plop on the trail, and you're going to have to come in and pick them up and help them. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's cool. That's good to go. So to close up, dogs are cool. <laughs> Junior developers are cool. They're going to grow up. They're going to become that well-trained, well-oiled junior developer that can just sit there, look directly at the camera. This was earlier in the day from the roses, so he hadn't worn himself out and got tired of getting pictures taken. That's OK. Maybe. All right, I'm just going to do that and that. So give junior devs a shot. It's really going to be beneficial. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is only puppy pictures. Website, not really meaningful. Albie has his own Instagram, if you are really that into puppy pictures. There's a lot of those out there. And yes, that is a Darth Vader 2 toy. He really enjoys that. So that's really all I have. I have some more puppy pictures, but as we're uh, we still got a little bit of time. I'll leave some time for questions. If anybody has any questions about the dog or junior developers and going through that process. Yes, Alec.